I got Jenny Horn and Kevin Hanks with me here in studio. Uh, today was an earnings day, too, that kind of stole some of the action. The macro kind of died down today, Kev. I think maybe Goolsby's comments kind of helped soften it a little bit. What he should have said was, speaking of reliable, Jenny oh, Horn right, and Kevin yeah. Hanks. Come okay. on. Of course. Now, Jeez, sorry. Take it easy on me. It's <laughs> Valentine's Day. I don't believe that Austin Goolsby really has the ability to be hawkish. I'm starting to think he doesn't either. I think he's <laughs> extremely dovish because the way he twisted that into a dovish right. uh, approach is a little bit d difficult. Now, what's going on in the market today? I think this market is the equivalent of a standing eight count, right? It got it got punched in the nose yet yesterday. It's trying to decide if it's upright or still in trouble. Okay. And so I think the close today and the close, you know, the data we're going to get Thursday and Friday are vital to, to, to this hanging in there. Obviously, next week's going to go into NVIDIA talk. It's yep. going to suck up all the oxygen in the market. But we got to get through two more. I'll, I'll, say, I'll call one. I don't think PPI is as important as uh, some people do. But retail sales, they're expecting a big drop in retail sales. We'll see if that happens. Okay, that'll be a fun one. So we've got a couple, yeah. you know, we got PPI and we've got a couple more prints this week uh, mm -hmm. to make things interesting. Like it, standing eight count. So yesterday was not a knockout. No, but it was... It, it was, hurt. It got hurt. You know, kind of yeah, wobbling. Exactly. Speaking of bouncing back, kind of the fun... The most fun story of the day is Lyft. It's where we started. Yeah, right where we began because the shares are still up. And I think that's an important message because the market's really uh, determined to reward companies that make key improvements. We've seen that all earnings season. We punish the ones that don't. And even for Lyft, with all that big debacle, we still gave him a big leash. I know. We don't have to go through, like, the, the margin guide. No, that We don't have to go through yeah. that again. I think this is, like, my 19th time discussing that. But like you said, as far as its, its earnings grow, they, it was phenomenal. I mean, we saw active riders come in 10% higher, 26% higher the number of rides. Gross bookings for the year increased 14%, while for the quarter rose 17%. And they highlighted the fact that actually a huge part of that was this 35% lift at stadiums in various large arenas, which was mm -hmm. a huge benefit to them for the quarter. So, I mean, there was definitely a ton to be excited about, especially now when you guide for gross bookings for the first quarter, ahead of what the street had been expecting. I mean, this was a really solid report. I, if we saw selling today, then I would be, maybe just there'd be like disarray regarding the CFO, but this was objectively a strong of a report that we've heard from Lyft. However, there is this ongoing strike right now, which at earlier today was being called for between like 11 and one. I'm not sure if that was Eastern or Central, but it is ongoing right now. And what's sort of amazing about the strikes when you're in a gig economy, is I was checking the fares in Chicago, they're not surging, but in Boston is one where we're seeing these strikes. So fares are up like 10 times. So the only companies that benefit right now are Uber and Lyft from the strikes. Wow. Fascinating. <laughs> it's amazing uh, how that works. Uh, Uber's having a great day too. What's up with that? Like how you know, I thought the whole story for Lyft's terrible price performance last year was that it was market absorption by Uber. But Uber's kind of like got its own thing going on now. Uber totally has its own thing going on. It's amazing. I mean, Uber's market cap right now is 26 times that of Lyft. Just to make <laughs> an illustration of how much bigger Uber has become. But no longer are we talking about the Uber that's burning cash and that's unprofitable. I mean, the path to profitability was all we talked about for years. That's right. Now yeah. we have this first ever share buyback plan. I mean, we have the fact that this company is now consistently profitable. It's in the S&P 500, and it's it's we're now going to be repurchasing up to seven. Billion worth of stock. So wow. that does compare to its market cap right now around $160 billion. That's actually only about $20 billion away from Intel. So, I mean, like, this is really a power play now in, in terms of not only just, I'd say, like the ride hailing space, but as far as data. I mean, Uber collects a ton of your data as well as then consumer discretionary. It's also like a basically a grocery delivery at this point. But I think that this is showing signs of a completely different Uber and it's reflective of some of the these really strong earnings we've gotten from Uber. Yeah, good uh, analysis. I think that also it's just another great example of this earnings season that has been about maturation of many of our growth companies uh, to the point about its profitability translating now into shareholder friendly activity. Five per, almost a 5% buyback of your market cap is not bad. It kind of makes me think of the way Meta paid out a dividend for the first time. 
Uber doing this as well? I mean, we are like, this is a great coming of age of like this generation's tech leaders that were all about growth now, Kevin, saying we're going to pay you off in a different way. I'm not comfortable in the role of a skeptic, but do you realize in the last 12 quarters, you expand your Thinkorswim platform to three years. They've been profitable six of the 12. Yep. Now, three of the last four, they've got a great trend going, but buying back stock, six of the last 12 pro quarters has been unprofitable. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, it seems like they're getting a little ahead of themselves here, but as long as they have the money and think that's the best use of capital, we have to trust them to do the right thing, but boy, that seems a little quick. Well, we're basically assuming that the new standard is going to hold, right? That um, we are done with the past of uh, declines, that this is once you cross that bridge, you don't go back. I mean, I applaud them. They made it through the pandemic and still stayed in business. Yeah. That that was impressive to begin with, but boy, they, they, it seems like an early in their overall uh, lifespan of this company to be buying back stock. Yeah, that's why it's, I mean, that's why I think the market is, um, they're trusting them and saying, wow, big yeah. message. I mean, there's a lot of signaling power when companies do this. That was one of my takeaways from Meta as well. By the way, speaking of Meta, did you guys see the Zuckerberg video that he uploaded talking about the yes. Apple Vision Pro? Guy's not messing around right now. And Apple's down a percent. Yeah, wow, well, you're right. It's kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, Zuckerberg will compete, remember that. Remember, uh -huh. Instagram is basically, in, in a broad sense, a copy of Snap. <laughs> that right. they adapted they and did better. Their yeah, stories, yeah. Exactly. They did mm -hmm. it better. But I mean, Mark Zuckerberg is not afraid to attack a competitor in well, many ways. That's what I was about to say, also, literally. So literally. He scared Elon out of the cage no, match. Yeah, we right. need that cage match to still occur. I'm disappointed it never happened. I know. I don't think Tim Cook's going to carry the mantle. It doesn't seem like really his vibe. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, all right. Thanks, uh, Kevin Hanks, Jenny Horn. Reliable team here in the afternoon.